Yeah. There is never. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> Caught me in the middle of my ripper throat. Welcome, everybody. Tom Matuska and Brett Wingfield here for our Thursday Live. And it's been a really, really busy Thursday. Um, Brett and I just hung an entire man's collection of trophies in a new building. And do you have any idea how much a 150 pound moose mount with 70 inch antler spread weighs when you get 15 feet off of the ground in one of them scissors lifts? It weighs a, a lot. lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it was very expensive for me and we probably get paid for this job but it's not going to cover Brett's chiropractor bill because <laughs> That's right. we were twisted in all kinds of different Tarted directions, and, and we hung, um, we hung tar and moose and caribou and and uh, elk, chamois and brown I mean, bear, brown bear and everything. So we just rushed in the door, and I mean the the makeup crew was sitting there literally with our lip gloss and stuff like that and our, our rouge and they said, sit down, you guys are late. So they did us and I, our hair got styled really quick and all that kind of stuff. So we're here. And then right before we started, Mandy came in and said, the ice cream man's ice cream here. Man is here. And she took an order for ice cream. Ice cream. So Brett and I got ripped lunch. lunch. And uh, they're coming every what? Thursday. Every Thursday every we Thursday. get ice cream. Um, so if you are working for a taxidermist and you don't get ice cream at least once a week, um, you better complain That's or right. else apply here because you get ice cream every week. <laughs> Make sure you're on the ice cream man's route. And um, last week, uh, what did we do last week? Airbrush. Airbrushing. Yeah, airbrushing we talked about stuff. airbrushes yeah. and took apart an eye airbrush and tried to simplify that a little bit because yeah. that's scary to a lot of people. And uh, I think the girl published another little uh, um, airbrush tutorial on taking them apart. And one, one thing is using the proper medium, the proper paints and thinners and all that sort of thing. And the other thing is your equipment. So we'll try to unravel that for you. Today, um, I think we're going to spend a little time on glosses and sealers. And if you were to look over here at uh, a huge supply of, th this is just glosses and sealers that we carry in the supply company as well as some of them we don't carry but we've used here in the past. And there are, um, I use the word mind boggling because um, what goes with what, what can you paint over over what other material and the manufacturers all say not to be used in conjunction with another person's this or that and I found over the years usually that's to keep all the business for themselves you know it's um, there's a lot of things that are compatible we've been using waters in conjunction with lacquers for really years and um, um, liquid scales is a water-based um, metallics and we've always used that with our lacquers with never never an issue um, but when you look through the catalogs and you're trying to choose a product without somebody saying this works good for this or that works good for that um, you somewhat don't know and you waste a lot of money on a lot of different stuff but uh, I, I guess we're gonna break them down into two um, we got sealers first of all yeah. and we got top coats and a top coat can be a satin, it can be a mat, <coughs> mat or it can be a gloss. And we also have um, um, like a water base yeah. water. and we have lacquers. Well, yeah. um, there's also oil base. Um, we tend to go with things that are a little more production oriented. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's so many we use every day um, sealers we use to I think our biggest use for them is to seal our fish skins but we put sealers on all kinds of different things you can put sealers on top of your uh, around your deer eyes you can put sealers on top of plastic parts um, as primers um, put a lot of different options for sealers sure and um, a sealer basically when you're working with leather or you're working with um, something like fish skins or 
bird parts, bird feet. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna have oils in the skin, you're gonna have hard skin, you're gonna have um, absorbent skin. And when you paint a color over that, every different, every different texture you have will absorb that paint differently and you're gonna get different hues, I found. So by putting on a sealer, um, so to speak, you kind of, for lack of a better term, level the playing field of the whole piece that you're working on, whether it's a deer face, a deer nose, um, a fish skin, a bird foot, you won't have hard spots, soft spots, oily spots, dry spots, um, and you kind of put a coating over the whole field. Then, with sealers, you want to be careful that the sealer isn't so thick that it uh, takes away your texture because the texture of a fish skin is critical to the look of the fish. The texture of your bird foot is critical, you know, to, we do a lot of washes with our bird feet um, to give them a really nice lifelike look. And if you cover up all the scale uh, separations, you made a mess of that too. So um, don't put it on so thick, you wanna seal the skin ready for coloration, but you don't wanna you know, put it on so thick. Yeah. Um, it's good to note too that the sealers will help blend the differences between our epoxy areas and our natural skin areas and give you one even surface. So we have plastic basically, and then we have the natural skin. And if we were to paint these, the epoxy will accept paint differently than the, than the skin. So that sealer will help blend that as well. Well, let's look at, should we look at some of the, the water base? Yeah. Um, sealers. Um, there's one. Createx. We like Createx products. Um, and Createx has a, it's actually an automotive sealer. And a lot of the Createx paints are used in the automotive industry. And um, this is, I think it's a 6000. This is called Transparent Sealer. Yep. It goes Trans on white. goes on white, but it clears. And that's yes. kind of scary that for you to scary. start with. We'll yeah. show you. We'll give you a demonstration we'll of that. that. Um, this comes, I think, in gray, like a primer. It does. Comes in white and black. And black. So you wouldn't yeah. want to use ooh, you wouldn't want to use white, black, or gray on your fish. But you might so like right to go there. Yeah, make sure you read. <laughs> Double check. Make sure you read carefully and don't, you know, maybe write with big magic markers on there or something. Um, but that's a commercial product. Um, another thing you can get. Um, locally or we carry it is Mod Podge. Mod Podge can be a really good sealer. And um, um, usually right out of the, it comes in a matte and it comes in uh, a gloss and I think it even comes in more if we don't carry them. But um, it comes out a little bit thick and because it's water based, you can thin it with water and you can probably thin it with alcohol. I have not done that. Let us know. Um, <laughs> um, but worth noting, Mod Podge can be used as a base coat sealer or a top coat gloss. Um, you can put it on before or after or both. And uh, we use that, and I can give you an example. I like using the mat on bird bills. This was a bird bill we painted in, in live, you know, several months ago. And once you paint, now you'll know it, anytime you get plastic parts, whether it's artificial fins, artificial bird heads, um, jaw sets like this, many companies use, the more parts you can get out of a mold, the more profitable it is. You can use a lot of different mold releases. Um, you have to get the mold release off of the plastic part before you paint it and um, otherwise the paint's gonna fleck off. Um, we do not use any kind of mold release that's gonna inhibit your paint. Um, so you don't have to worry about ours. And if you're ever wondering if you got something from us, go ahead and call us. But if you're ever in doubt, um, take your, for instance, this white tail jaw set. I'd take that jaw set and I would scrub it with a soft toothbrush with maybe lacquer thinner, mineral spirits or something to make sure that there's no mold release on there because you might spend hours and hours and hours painting that to perfection only to blow it and the paint chips off and that would make you really, really sad. But just to show you um, 
give you a little demonstration how we would do a bird bill. Now this has been painted, we did not seal it. So you don't, I don't think you have to seal a plastic part unless there's a reason you're trying to seal it. Um, we tend to seal our organic parts more. And I'm going to put just a little bit of Mod Podge in a cup. I'm going to add a little bit of water. And I have a really soft, this is a wash brush. Um, we use them for um, staining our feet. You know, we use oil-based stains on our, our bird feet. And this is a really soft makeup brush. And I'm just going to soak that in there and put a little bit of water in my Mod Podge. I do not want it ultra, ultra liquidy. Can you show Caitlin here? Okay, now I'm just gonna give my bill a nice coating and that's all it takes. It goes on somewhat whitish. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have it, get this fish out of the way. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have it built up in the nostrils to take away detail. I'm gonna be careful on the teeth. I'm gonna get the underneath side. And it does not hurt to get it around the plastic perimeter of the bill. And I think it even aids in, we super glue our bird skin around the bill. And I think that really helps, you know, adhere uh -huh. your super glue. Um, but that's an example of a water-based gloss or top coat. Um, I use the mat. And now, that will clarify. That'll go yeah, clear. clear. Um, yep. You have to be careful with these words. That was a big one for me. Okay. Very simple. Um, nice thing about water-based products is you just a little bit of water and it's good to go. But that's um, that's a real good gloss if we were um, say you have a bird standing on a rock and he just jumped out of the water and his feet are wet um, Mod Podge gloss works really well a lot of times you don't have to deal with strong smelling um, glosses and things like that um, and it will smell pretty you know not be offensive mm -hmm. okay what else we got um, shall we seal a fish okay um, we've got two different kinds of sealers we have a lacquer-based sealer, and we have a water-based sealer. We have two fish here. We'll show you both of them. Um, do you want to do the lacquer? I'll do the lacquer, and let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, Christmas time came around, and you always have Christmas rushes being taxidermists, and people want their fish, and you got to like two weeks before Christmas, you have no rush jobs, and all of a sudden, three days before Christmas, you got 30 fish that you have to have done. We had a wonderful sealer called Premium Fish Sealer, mm -hmm. and the company changed um, the formula or every time some kind of regulations, EPA regulations come out, um, we uh, tax them as always get hit. Anyway, I sealed all my fish, and I painted a perch and I'm up here by myself at night and I'm looking, it's orange. It, it wasn't a nice yellow perch, it was an orange. And I thought, what in the heck? You know, I must be drunk or something. And I thought, I must have grabbed the wrong bottle. So I had to strip it. I take all the paint off the fish. I make sure I have the premium fish sealer. I had to reseal the fish. Tick tock, Santa's coming. All of a sudden I paint it my yellow turns orange. I look at my yellow, I go, what the heck? I must have got something switched in the bottles. I get a brand new yellow. I do it a third time, it turns orange. It was the makeup of our new premium fish sealer. We hadn't stopped selling it because it reacted with our life tone paints and it changed the color. So um, that was an example of using something not meant for the tax treatment industry. We are gonna use, and we have for quite some time, base coat sealer. Base coat sealer is a lacquer product. We seal all of our fish before, now we use silk span on the back of our fish. 
before we um, apply our silk span and our flexitive to our fins, we found that by sealing them with a lacquer fish sealer, mm -hmm. um, we do not get the distortion and the waves in our fins. So we like using, uh, we like sealing our fish fins before we ever back them, and we seal the entire fish before we do fix it. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I just take a little cup, put some premium fish seal in it. This is a, a Lifetone product. Base coat sealer. Base coat sealer. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's what he's here for. <laughs> Um, I, I like to use, because I do not take care of my brushes, I like to use, what do they call them, a chip brush. And a chip brush is, is, is the cheapest brush money can buy. And because it's the cheapest brush money can buy, sometimes it leaves chips, leaves little hair follicles all over. So, so watch if you're using an inexpensive brush. Um, you're better off buying a good brush, using it for sealer, taking care of it. Now we like to brush our fish, but they could also Spray airbrush it. Sure. Fish. Um, and like if we usually do fish in, in batches and I'm gonna take the base coat sealer and I like to give it a nice even coat from the tail towards the head is my method. And my thinking is it gets up under the scales. Mm -hmm. You won't have air gaps. It'll plug any, any air or any voids that you might have up in there. Um, I think you get the nicest finish brushed. Brushed? Yeah. And don't do something like this. Especially <laughs> with lacquer dries pretty fast and once you put it on, if you keep going over it, it's going to have yeah. start to dry and you're going to get a not a pretty finish. Um, I'll do this a little bit. I'll stand up so I won't do the whole fish, but I'll give you an idea. Now, the lacquer sealers um, evaporate really nicely. So you see runs going right down the side of my fish and for some of you you would get panicky seeing that but I'm just going to even those runs out and they actually evaporate and you won't have any built up runs in your fish. So that's one of the advantages of the lacquer base sealers. Is that the typically don't have runs. Yeah. Now, I would recommend on a nice walleye like this, something four or five pounds, I would recommend two to three coats. One's adequate. Um, I think I get a nicer finish with more coats, but don't what determines how many coats is the texture of my scales. If I have a real heavy scaled fish like a walleye, I can get away with more. If I have a real fine scaled fish like a trout, um, less. Or you're gonna cover up all the scale detail. While you're doing the base coat sealer, should I seal mine with the water base, show them the difference. And I wouldn't doubt we're gonna switch to water base. <laughs> um, so this is the Autoborn sealer. It's the Transparent 6000 from Creotex. Um, and we have been using this on the last few fish that we've done, like it very much. Um, I'm just gonna pour some in here. This seems to be great consistency right out of the bottle. Um, no need to thin it, but you could um, if you did want to thin it. I'm going to apply mine the same way that Tom did with a one inch chip brush. And I'm going to go just right over in the same way, brushing against the scales. And no need to go over the fins. The fins we've already treated and sealed. Um, so we don't need to do that. But we are gonna go over all of our epoxy, there it is. And 
this white is very scary. Because if Jacob brought up the white instead of the transparent, <laughs> he could have a problem. Um, I've done that with gloss. <clears throat> You've seen me do it. Mm -hmm. Let's say you did. What do you do? Cuss a lot. And then what? Poor dog. Step three. We uh, we like to when we're painting seal our paints and our powders and things like that with um, like maybe fixative for especially the the Krylon materials. And we got a gloss somewhere a few years ago that was the same color as the paint can, same labeling and everything. And um, I had a walleye that I spent quite some time, was pretty proud of it, and I sealed it with white. You laughed at me when I did my copy that way, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was karma. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did the same thing, beautiful reproduction copy, picked up the can to gloss it, and I picked up the white spray paint. And, and they look the same. It is a really honest mistake. Now, you can't tell, the cameras are getting really high tech, but they can't pick up the smells that we're enduring right now. Smell-o-vision? My, that's what we need. My lacquer sealer, um, you will want to wear a respirator, and you will want to um, have good ventilation, have an exhaust fan, because it's extremely strong smelling. Um, lacquer is a good production type material, but um, you have to endure the odor. Unlike um, Createx's um, water gloss, um, it smells like water. What's water smell like? Like that walleye <laughs> gloss you're putting on there. And um, when we first uh, got the Createx, um, sealers and glosses, um, this is how they go on. And you're on pins and needles for a little while looking at that white fish and hoping that it's going to dry. <laughs> yes. Um, if you have any question or any areas that aren't drying or aren't turning clear, um, get them in front of a fan. Uh, that will help you. Um, as, you're, as you're sealing these, worth noting too, um, just kind of brush out you'll have little air bubbles um, that start to form. You can just brush those out. Um, go inside the mouth, make sure and get inside the mouth and gills. And that's a good point too. If you're doing a lot of fish, <clears throat> we'll do it with a brush for one or two fish, you know, just, and with the lacquer, I mean, you can actually slop it around in there really a lot and you'll think that it's gonna run everywhere, but it, it evaporates so well for you. Um, but don't be afraid, if you're doing a lot of fish, um, I like to use an H airbrush and pick yourself up a number five tip. Number five tip will spray heavier. And uh, get a bottle, and if you're sealing fish gills and the inside of the mouth where you can't reach with the brush, um, you can blast that sealer in there. And um, this is one of the better products I've ever used for that. Um, and also works really well um, for as you're doing powder work um, powders or um, any of the other things that you want to gloss in between layers just to have an H airbrush set up with your gloss in it um, that you can that you can lock down your powders that works really good now I noticed when <clears throat> you've been using the the Createx sealer lately and one thing you were pretty impressed with was the feel of the fish mm -hmm. once it was sealed. Yeah, I really liked that. I was a little bit skeptical. I wasn't sure how this going on as heavy as it is, um, how that was going to dry down. And it leaves a very nice texture still remaining with your fish, but walleyes being a really coarse scaled fish um, tend to be really rough and not, um, wouldn't be how you would feel them in nature. Especially the dry ones. Water. Yeah. But yeah. in real life, they're not, they're, they're coarse scale, but they're not like this. Yeah, not you know? like that. So it does bring them a little bit more back to natural, kind of. Gives them a really nice finish. Um, it, it works really well for the 
course of vacation. So now you just sit on pins and needles hoping that turns. Hoping that Jacob brought the transparent 6,000. And a word, we, the we answer that question a lot. We've had many people call and say, you know, I use this gloss and it, my fish turned white. You know, what happened? Um, typically, my experience has been if it turns white, you've trapped moisture between your gloss and the fish skin. So if we used a lacquer product and it's a real humid, we notice it on humid days, mm -hmm. a real humid day, maybe the air conditioner is on, doors open, um, we will spray a fish like one of the Krylons or um, clear glazes and all of a sudden we have a real white hue and you get panicky. Your, your fish is dry to the touch, but you have that whiteness and you, you know, call the supply company. And, but what it really is, is your outside surface has dried, trapping humidity in between, and it will, it will go away um, as it dries, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call us. Um, but it will go away. Um, and some, we've taken a hairdryer to even yeah. speed that up. And some people will even lightly warm the fish before they apply sealers and glosses just to help that so it dries from the outside or from the inside or nearest part to the fish out. So when you put that on. But now, could you use, okay, this is going to dry clear. Can you use that around a deer eye or, or, or do you want to do anything? You're painting on leather that's been tanned and there's probably oils in there. Do you, should you do something with that? Um, you absolutely could. I generally don't put something on before I paint, um, but we do like to put on the fixative as we paint, especially with the pan pastels. We like to lock those down. Um, but I've seen you use um, satins. I like and it satins. It gives a really nice finish. Um, uh, Krylon, we do not have it. I guarantee you it'll be in the catalog next year. Um, <laughs> As uh, the Krylons come in, in clear glazes, they come in mats, but they also come in a satin, and and I think satin misted on your deer eyes and and fleshy areas at a distance of about a foot and a half really adds luster and beauty and life to your animals. Yeah. You can do the best paint job in the world, but if it's not moist looking it's just not it's just yeah. not quite lifelike i'm um, just a little dusting and uh, brings them to life for me so i do like satins a lot mm -hmm. we'll have it next week i know there you go <laughs> we thought we did we uh were talking about it the other day we thought we carried it uh, you have some other um let's see the prolex varnish this mm -hmm. is another one so this would be more of a gloss this is a kind of a high gloss like our liquid is it liquid crystal mm -hmm. and um this is actually sold to be mixed with your Perlex powder. So it's called Perlex varnish, but in and by itself, it's just a real shiny varnish. We've used this in our easy nosers. Works good as an as a easy nose material. Um, Mod Podge gloss works good as an easy, you know, mm -hmm. to build up the texture in your noses. Can you use that with liquid um, scales or pan pastels? Does it do the same thing as Perlex powder? Um, we used it in liquid scales. Didn't we use something like this to make them a little creamier? They also make a retarder for liquid scales. Mm -hmm. But um, if you wanted to dilute liquid scales, like maybe it's too metallic for you and you really want a metallic, but it's a little harsh, um, I'd put a drop of this in and it will give you more vehicle for the amount of glitter particles yeah. that you have in. Um, that's a good product. Yeah. Um, another one is... Um, um, Clear glaze, what's uh, liquid, or no? Triple thick. Triple thick glaze, and that comes in, you got about three sizes of that now. We have you, the spray, the two ounce, and the four ounce. Yeah, and that's, yeah. And then you got a little bitty one. This is like the four ounce. Yep. You got a little bitty one. Um, we've used that for years and years. That's another good water-based gloss. Those are glosses, yeah. Um, not long, well, I guess it was long ago. I did a competition fish, and that's what I used for my flexitive. You know, oh paint. yeah. Um, clear pour top coat. That's another clear one, and uh, it 
it's de from Deco Arts, a high gloss clear acrylic, um, very similar to these products. They, they put it on kind of tabletops and things like mm -hmm. that is, is, I'm not sure. Kind we of like a modge played modge. with it a little bit. And uh, any three of these would be really good for your eyelids or any place you wanted a sure. high gloss. You can put it on with a brush. You can put it on with an applicator. Um, you know, you, you could you'd spray it. You have to thin it down a little bit to spray it. Yeah. Um, we have a couple other sealers too. Um, if you don't want to paint them on, um, this is Superfish Sealer. Gary Bowen Superfish Sealer. Yep. Yep. And that would be in um, replacement of what, what we, we just, just did. did. Yep. yep. To seal the fish before prior to painting. Um, some people will use bullseye shellac. Um, I've seen a lot of people use shellac. Um, yeah, we used shellac for years and years and years. Sprayed it out of a big gun. We would lay all of our fish out. One at a time, we'd spray them with a big automotive sprayer. Um, I used shellac for 20 years, probably. Mm -hmm. A lot of taxidermists still use shellac. Yeah. Yellows a little bit, but um, gives a nice paintable surface. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice paintable surface. Um, what else do we have? Oh, there's so many there, you haven't even touched the surface. Well, we've got glosses, lots of glosses. What do you want to do next? Um, what else? Hand over some of those light tone products in the bottles there. Yeah. Um, most paint companies make an array. These are lacquer products. Light tone has um, liquid crystal in an aerosol, correct? And a liquid that you can spray through your airbrush or you mm -hmm. can um, spray through a big sprayer. To get the best gloss on a bigger fish, they say you have to wet the whole fish um, at one time, and a lot of times an airbrush is not the best thing to spray gloss with because the spray is too small and you won't be able to wet the whole fish. It has to be able to cross link to, yep. you know. Fancy word. I know. Whatever, <laughs> whatever's in paint, it cross link, it connects. Um, but liquid crystal, you'd want some kind of a sprayer, like at least a uh, a number five tip and an H airbrush or a bigger sprayer. A bigger and we'll show you yeah. some bigger sprayers here that we've used in the past. Um, Life Tone Noise makes, also makes a, a 200 gloss top coat. Um, and for those deer guys that want to put that satin around their eyes and only around the eyes and not in their hair like you would with an aerosol, sure. um, satin top coat from yeah. Life Tone, put that in your H airbrush and and give that satin mm -hmm. lifelike look around just your eyes. Don't get it in your hair. Clint will get mad. See, there's a little marble in there. Don't get to see it in the paint, but in here you can see it. <laughs> Pay extra for that one. Um, um, what else? And this is just the base coat sealer again that we that Tom used on the fish. And we've got Envirotex. Yeah. That's a high gloss. That's a nice high um, gloss. Envirotex gloss, and this is Envirotex. If you've never used it, it's a two-part um, A and B epoxy, and it's a little bit like clear scenery resin, like embedment, like you do embedment sand and make water splashes. But you really can't pour this. It it tends to yellow if it's thick, mm -hmm. but as an aerosol, it's great because you put it on very thin, and it works really well. Um, nice high gloss um, and a lot of those as we're talking about glosses we're intending to put those on over the top of our paint so our paint application is already in place um, you can also layer through your glosses as you're doing especially with your fish work and building depth in your paint you can put down paints you can lock them in with glosses and then continue to paint on top of them um, making sure that you've got a compatible gloss with your paint medium. Um, but this is another one that works really well. We use that a lot. Lots um, lots. The workable fixative um, came to us through uh, for the pan pastels, um, but also works really well with any of your Perlex powders um, to lock some of your powders in place. Um, this works. This works exceptionally well. Now I've seen uh, no, no, our our method first of all would be to seal this fish, mm -hmm. then we paint the fish. We usually start out with um, the repaired areas around the head, that sort of thing. The first thing I always do 
um, is I write the customer's name because I usually have the, the directions and the receipts on his tail paper clip to the fish. I write the customer's name back here and then put a piece of tape on it so that as I'm painting and glossing, I don't lose the paperwork and I've always got the guy's name, okay. um, which I got in the habit of doing that. Okay, then we paint the fish and like you said, um, seal it, whether you're using powders or pearls or whatever. Um, I've watched um, Mike Ortheberg use a product similar to Clear Glaze, maybe another brand, um, and he, every color he put down, he sealed it with a, with a glaze, and by the time he was done painting the fish, it looked like he'd used an automotive gloss on it. I mean, it was beautiful, and it was, Cheyenne and I said, what, what, do you sh what do you gloss your fish with? And he said, oh, I'm just sealing the paint in. You know, that's all he had done was use a gloss like this. But, you know, this is 10, 12 bucks a can, I'm guessing, I have no idea, but um, that's a lot for a gloss on a fish. And do we want to talk about some of those glosses? Glosses, we have more glosses. Um, so once our fish is painted, we're talking about a finished gloss. Um, Krylon works very well. Um, the top coat gloss from Life Tone. Um, there's another one that we triple thick. We like using well. triple thick. Triple thick will give you a very high glaze. Again, on a bigger fish, you're going to use a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and spray it on, let it dry, give it another coat, and I don't know. Would you say three to four? Yeah. To get the kind of gloss we like. We like a high luster. I've always liked a, a real shiny fish, a wet looking fish. Um, it's kind of been my trademark in mounting fish. I've, um, I've seen some gorgeous satin finished fish, but typically that's not mine, yeah. you know? They really bring out a lot of color. The gloss brings out your colors and your paint work and it just, it's a real satisfying day when we get to yeah. gloss fish. Um, now, if they don't want the high gloss, they, there is the sure. matte finish you option. Do the matte. And we would do um, a matte or a satin on something, maybe like a catfish. You know, something that um, the fish has a slight bit of texture to it, and um, a wet looking catfish tends to look plastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we get a little more lifelike of a fish out of a satin or a matte. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gary Bowen super fish gloss. A lot of fish have been glossed with that. Oh man. Um, Gary makes the Superfish sealer and the Superfish gloss. Yeah. Gary yeah. passed away, but um, his products are still alive and well in the taxidermy industry. People call all the time and they say, uh, um, what do you gloss your fish with? You know, they want, they want a really nice gloss. They went to a show and they saw these beautiful, beautiful fish and want to know, you know, they're using the less expensive products and they're not quite getting the results that they want. And so we use the um, two-part automotive yeah. we have for years and years and years. This is the catalyst. And this is a urethane, a high solids yeah. urethane. And high solids, um, I'm sure this is not the explanation the auto parts store is gonna tell you, but high solids for me means thicker. Thicker and it'll build up quicker. Um, that type of a gloss needs to be sprayed. It's got directions on the can here, first of all. Um, it shows you you have to mix it 50% 50, um, 50 catalyst, which is the smaller container, with, you know, 100% um, of the one part of one, half a part of another, so two to one. Um, you mix it, you stir it up. And we spray that for years. We kind of do fish in large batches. Um, we use a big automotive gun like this. And as big as these are, and intimidating as they look, they're nothing more than a big airbrush. Mm -hmm. Like in our little uh, airbrush presentation, I think I told you an airbrush is nothing different than this in a little, yeah. little configuration, different configuration. Uh, but they work good for spraying large glosses. Um, and you've got a little bit smaller version of the same um, thing too, don't you? Yeah, it's this one. And here's mine. It's kind of a dirty used. 
uh, but it's gravity fed. Again, same as an airbrush. Um, this amounts to how much product's gonna come out. It comes down gravity fed here. So you would pre-mix your- We mix it in a paper cup. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then it goes in the rub. And if you get, um, I don't know, 30 PSI or a little bit less, it's, it's not, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't go all over. Does have a quite an offensive odor. Yeah, um, we very, do it at the end of the day. Yep. yep. We open the doors, turn on the fan, do it at the end of the day when we go off fish. Sometimes we'll do it outside. Be very careful with acrylic eyeglass lenses when you're glossing fish. That sticks to your lenses and you'll ruin your glasses. Very um, you, can't, you can't spray your glasses with something like this. It doesn't work. No. Um, and oftentimes what you'll have is a dry spray. So you'll have a wet look area, come back to um, apply another layer of gloss or more gloss and you'll find that the new gloss is looking dry in the spot between the old gloss and the new. And that's very hard to overcome with small applicators. And even with the, um, even with an aerosol, I glossed my competition bass, the last one I did, um, right before I left and got to the show with only hours to spare before it had to be in. Um, drove the whole way with a fresh gloss smell in the vehicle, 11 hours, and turned him over, handed him to Don Frank. And I looked at Don and I thought, uh-oh. And when we turned it over, I had re-glossed right before I left and I had dry spray on the whole underside of my fish and it was terrible. So- it Must have been good enough. Uh, two long hours of fix-its and sand it down and do what you can do with with what you can while you're in the prep area and, and manage to get it done. But that's a, a, the lesson was a good automotive gloss would have, would not have done that to me. Boy, my walleye is all nice and dry here and everything. How's your yeah. albino walleye doing over there? <laughs> He's kind of blue now. He's going <laughs> through that uh, drying phase. And that doesn't scare um, you, huh? Uh, it scared me to death the first time we did it. <laughs> um, but you can't always carry a compressor and a spray gun and all of those things that you would need to or this this is made for a larger batch and i think this is but over a hundred dollars worth of gloss right here so for the average taxidermist at home who um, maybe does a fish here and a fish there or three or four fish that's a that's out of the realm of reality yeah. to spend that kind of money because you will waste more you will you have to mix it in big enough batches and put it in a big sprayer and it's good for how long? Um, I'd say a couple hours or maybe overnight it'll yeah. set up in the gun. How many yeah. walleyes would you say you could get done with that? In that can? In that oh, can. Oh man. This will do a lot of fish and that is the advantage of it. Maybe not a hundred but a lot. A lot. Yeah, you can do a lot. This kit will gloss a lot of fish which is the advantage but if you don't do a lot of fish you're going to be sitting on a gallon of gloss for quite a while. But we have another fun demonstration for people, right? Mm -hmm. Mandy brought this to us, what, a few months ago? Maybe more, six. We're kind of slow. We don't get all of them used yeah. when we're supposed to. Um, but this is Spray Max. And this is also, this is basically an aerosol version. It is. Of the high solids automotive gloss that we have here. And so. Um, you're going to get the same gloss that we have in the automotive um, through the automotive sprayer out of a out of an aerosol can and and to me as long as we've done this that didn't sound very feasible um, but she made us try it anyways and we did and it might have worked a little bit <laughs> and that's an eleven. 11.8 ounce can, yeah, 11.8 ounce can. How many would you say you could get with that? Um, we got about a half a dozen. I would eight, say a maybe? half a dozen big fish. Yeah. Completely yeah. glossed. Mm -hmm. And you don't, I mean, once it's mixed, you have 48 hours, is that yes. right? Yep. 48 hours to use it. So when your 48 hours is up, no more spraying, it's done. Don't you just spray over. one fish. You need to have a gloss day. Yeah, have your gloss. Um, and so, an aerosol traditionally hasn't had the option of a catalyzed component, but this does. So this aerosol can has 
the catalyst and it has the gloss in it. And Tom will show you how to oh, do that. Oh, I thought now, you were going to show me. We, um, worth noting too, when we do any gloss, you've always told me to do a flash coat. So we'll, we'll put on two coats of gloss. I don't know where I got that idea. Um, Al Aiken. <laughs> maybe Al um, Aiken. It was too, I mean, runs are the worst thing that'll happen to you is you're going to spray a gloss and all of a sudden your spots are gonna start running or something. Uh, runs will kind of drip yeah. off the fish. Um, an auto body person that coached me at one time said, give it a tacky coat first. So you, you dust the fish, not heavy enough so it runs off, but you dust the fish. And if you have seven, eight fish to do, do three or four of them, come back and gently touch one and see if it's tacking up. If it is, give them a heavy coat. When you give them the heavy coat, um, that tacky coat helps hold it and keep it from running. I don't know if there's any merit to it, but it's something I've done forever. Yeah, because your fish gloss very nicely. So, so we're gonna try this? Now that looks like a new can. Do you have another 10 fish to gloss no, with? No, but, but yeah. for our customers Three. and a demonstration, it's just- Just check it. We just, mm -hmm. and we did have a big pipe that was gonna be ready and painted, but all of a sudden the uh, trophy room, room, room kind of came in. Uh, but we do have, we have three big fish and we can show them how to use that. Okay, do it. Now, read directions first of all. And we've done this once, so we're kind of trained professionals, right? Um, I'm popping off the red cap that was on the top. I'm taking off the lid. I'm taking the red cap. Yeah, tell me if I do something I feel like wrong. confetti's gonna fly out. I know, <laughs> silly string. <laughs> I'm gonna put the red cap on the bottom, and then I just hit it, right? Correct? Like so. Yep. Now that it's should have punctured, yep. that should have punctured my catalyst within the vial. Now you're supposed to shake it. Do the happy dance for and you're supposed to shake it very, very thoroughly. Now, what I did, as easy as that was, and if you're not sure what you did, go ahead and hit it a couple more <laughs> times. Um, what I did was I turned um, this into that two-part automotive. Yes. So by the catalyst portion in that can is stored in the very bottom. And by hitting the red plunger, the red plunger punctures the storage container for the catalyst and activates. How do you know there's one in there? I was told. He was here. Um, but that's what activates it and will cause that to set up. Now, I wouldn't use this. If you do deer and you want a wet look nose, this isn't the thing no. to use. Um, this is basically a, a fish type of thing. Another thing that Anytime you change to a new product and you don't know how it's going to react, we like to take a piece of plexiglass and we will use the parts, like if we're using a new sealer for the first time, first time, we'll seal the piece of plexiglass and then let it dry, paint on our paint. If that went well, spray it with a gloss. Then, if that's all dry, examine it real careful for alligatoring or cracking or peeling. Um, this is one, I think Jacob was playing with this, and um, we had him test some different things. Well, we were doing, Very we were pretty. doing Createx, right? Yeah. And uh, different glosses and stuff, and he has little notes up here, which one he put where, different glosses, how they reacted, different paints, um, but that's pretty valuable, so you don't, it really is. You don't want it, something bad to happen on a customer fish. And you can see it through the plexiglass and make sure and walk through your entire painting process from the sealer to the paint to everything that you're going to put in between if you do any hand paint and as well as the layers of workable fixative or any of those things and then your final gloss because that will tell the story you'll be able to see it through the plexiglass we think we're ready i think so 
you guys might want to stay back. I'll, I'll spray this right here. Can you hold it and I'll spray this right here? <laughs> I'll hold it over here. Here, let's hold it up here. Now, nothing more than an aerosol. Gives you a really nice fan spray. Now turn him around the other side. There you go. Good. I'm getting it on your arm. Mm -hmm. Let me do the back of him. Get it up to it that way. Now that, that's what I would call a tacky spray. And then I like to just feel a little bit, and I can feel it's not runny anymore. It's not dried by any means. Okay, now I'm going to give him a heavier spray. Do you want a couple other fish to spray too? Sure. While we're doing this. Now look at that's a look at that gloss. Looks nice. And that's just I will give him another good good spray. And this is just a. Now, could you spray. do that to your no. driftwood and habitat as well? No. Um, no. It, it'd be a big waste on wood, I think. Got yeah, it. It'll soak in. Now, do be careful not to over gloss in the first spray just so it doesn't, um, especially freshly painted fish, uh, it can, the solvents can cause it to run. It can eat into your paint if you put it on too heavy. Now this is a, a silver northern which we have in abundance in the Iowa Great Lakes. And why he doesn't look like a typical northern. Him and sit. typically, you would have your mask and your vent on right now. And this is oh, this smells. This is right. This is a strong odor. Just so. um, now, look at that gloss already. What about your eye? I can touch it, and it's tacky. Um, our eyes are plastic. We're just putting plastic right over them. Eyes are good. Now, will you wipe that off, or that's how you want? That stays. It? That's that stays. Yeah. It'll be as glossy as a fish is. So we do protect our eyes when we put on. Um, as we're painting, so we don't paint over the eye, but we pull all of our protection off of the eye before we gloss. Okay, now that's about as good of a gloss as we could ever hope for. And he should stay that way. And I think um, Jim Bacon was a big proponent of us carrying this. Can you stand to the right? There you go. Um, also worth noting that um, that can, the aerosol can has a different tip, has a little fancier fan tip um, that you can turn to get a different uh, application if you need to. Very nice. Now we get pretty excited. We get pretty excited when we gloss fish because they really come to life for us. Now, when I tell you, when I'm touching it, you see me touching it, and um, I say it's tacking up already. I can feel it's it's sticky. It's like syrup that's drying on the yeah. syrup bottle, you know. But. Um, that will be dry to touch, I would say, in under an hour, probably. It'll be dry to touch. This can be used for 48 hours. I can come in tomorrow morning and I can say, oh, look at that spot there. I didn't get it quite good enough. Um, and I can use the same can. Yeah. I can do it over and over. Do be careful about um, timing and layering glasses. Um, they can eat into each other. Um, but we'll go over these fish over and over and over again and just look for flat spots, look for dry spots. Another good tip, Tom, that I see you do a lot is to, because we put our fish on a wire, um, we can get them flat like this and, I'll, and then put a heavy coat on and it won't run to the show side um, if you were to have any runs. Or lay them down flat. So this is a new product that is not in the catalog that you'll see, but uh, it is available on the website right now. 
and it's twenty five ninety five, and it is a part of our Facebook Live sale. So through tomorrow, it's fifteen percent off, um, and it comes in eleven point eight ounce can. Twenty five ninety five, and if you've got, you know, you can easily get, um, I don't know, let's say eight walleyes. You can maybe six walleyes to be fair. Um, six yeah. walleyes, um, you know, that's four bucks a piece. You just did that big, that big northern. That fish is what, 38, 40 inches, mm -hmm. 38. Um, this is two thirds full, I'd say. And we're good for another three good sized fish. I would say so. Yeah, pretty easily we can do that. Green back over there, we can do this. When judging, is there ever too much gloss? Um, do you want to take that? <laughs> gloss is the best thing to hide things, I think. Um, it is. Yeah, if it's running off, you know. I think the application of gloss is where people have more problems than is there too much. At least for me, I'm not going to hit somebody too hard if their preference is a heavy gloss or a light gloss. But how they put it on would make all the difference. So if it has runs or uneven spots or flat spots and glossy spots, that's probably what would make a bigger difference to me than how much gloss they put on. Early, early, early in the Iowa show years ago, we had a a person who continued to enter fish and he he finished them all I'd say satin not not even a semi gloss or satin and his his paint and his finish was very good but uh, he never got better than a, a second and he said I'm convinced you can't take a blue ribbon with a unless your fish has got a heavy gloss and it wasn't the gloss <laughs> his, his gloss was really his you know his finish was sure. very very nice and you go to the world show you see some people with some satin fish that oh they're nice oh you yeah. know that's a that's a finish that done well is very appealing it's um it is gloss is going to hide a lot gloss blends things in um if you have an unglossed fish or a matte finished fish you are sticking it out there for someone to for someone to see, you better be pretty, pretty proud of uh, the work. Look at that, isn't that pretty? It is, it is. And next week, I think, we're going to delve into hybrid fish. You did it, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure uh, if he was gonna say yeah, it. Yeah, hybrid fish is, a lot of people are, are, are moving to artificial fins and artificial heads and the fish skin and what's amazing to me, what's just amazing to me, is 40 years ago, I had fish from Mexico where they had the real fish skin and artificial fins. 40 years ago, and it's taken us that long to catch up, you know. And, uh, but anyway, a lot of people are using them. We've got some tremendous, tremendous um, fish heads from Gary Brock. Oh, yeah. And um, um, we're just gonna show you that side of, of mounting a fish. So we'll have a fish and we'll, we'll go through the whole pattern making and the skinning and, and all of that, just like we did before with a large mouth. And we'll take it all the way from start to finish. We'll probably drag mm -hmm. it out for a long time. The bass took, I think, eight months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go fast, um, but I'm excited. That'll be fun. What do you have? We have a couple new exciting things. Um, Cole Kirkshank with Taxidermy University has put together some amazing, amazing DVDs for you guys that are kind of how-tos. Um, we have available the painting of largemouth bass um, with Jimmy Lawrence, molding and casting with Cole Kirkshank, um, painting a black crappie with Cole, um, painting a wild turkey head and feet with Blake Reiminger, and then also the full disc series. Um, then mounting a competition bobcat with Cole Kirkshank, and then the mounting a competition whitetail with Clint Rickey. Cole admitted that he went backwards on this, but this one a lot of people might already have. There's a new one in the works, and we're going to play the trailer at the end of the show. But we actually will have it hopefully tomorrow, maybe Monday. They will ship next week. We're taking pre-orders. It's $130 for the pre-orders. Um, it's basically a tax journey 101, and it is basically the starting for beginners for mounting a white tail. The thing that, what it covers, um, an introduction to taxidermy basically, and it covers skinning, flushing, tanning, 
mounting, and finishing. So you're gonna get this one that we already have is taking your skills to the next level, a competitive level. So it's covering more in-depth competition secrets and things like that from Clint, who's an amazing, amazing taxidermist. The new one is the same. You're gonna have some of the same because it's the same guy mounting it with the same tricks. However, it's how you're going to get the best commercial mount. So it's more for beginners, but at the same time, it also covers um, skinning, flushing, tanning, mounting, and finishing. There's no frills, no competition tricks. It's the most solid commercial deer mounts is basically what you're gonna get. So kind of a back to the basic set, but that should be here tomorrow, if not Monday, and we'll be able to ship it out for you guys next week. So go ahead, it's online, you can pre-order right now, and then we'll get it out when it comes. Um, he did tell me that he's been laid up with knee issues oh, for, no. um, with no going in for surgery and stuff like that, so he's had a lot of time to do editing. So he has been working, him and Clint put together, um, a molding and casting a white tail mouth cup. And that is gonna have some of the bigger trade secrets in this industry that people are gonna go crazy over. But he said it'll be available in like a month. So he's working on the trailer now, so watch for that to come out. Um, we also have our cape thread over there, if you can grab that. It's back in stock. Um, we had it out of stock for a while and we have a new color. So we have your white, your black, your brown, and then this one is, we're calling it leather, and you can kind of see the difference there. Um, so those are online, also a part of our 15% off sale. Um, our XP series are available, the two larger sizes now online and ready to go. Those are a hot item. They are. And then, again, your Spray Max, that is on the 15% off sale for the Facebook, so check that out. Um, we have our shows. Shows kind of got all canceled. The Missouri show is the only show left for us that is still on, and they're going to get closer. Wait till they get closer, but it's still going, um, and we're still planning on going. Nationals, you said, was canceled? I saw yesterday, yes. I haven't heard that officially, but I saw People yesterday. People are going to be very Facebook. hungry for um, yes. Kurt Ainsworth. Yep. And Texas, that Texas was the big one we are going to go to this Kurt year. Yep. Um, so Missouri is kind of our last one that we're hoping we get to go to, so fingers crossed that everything gets back to normal with that. Um, and we have talked about doing our own little Matuska Habitat competition style. So we'll work on that for you guys, but kind of bring your shows and compete for something with that. Um, I think that's all we have right now, but stay tuned. We're gonna play a Clint's trailer DVD and we'll catch you next week. And so are we gonna give away one of those nice things? Oh, you wanna give away the Spray Max, yeah. Lawrence. Charmin, you are the winner, so that will be on your account for you, so. Hi, I'm Clint Ricky with Tax Me University, mm -hmm. and in this DVD. Great. All right, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Clint Ricky with Tax Me University, and in this DVD set, we're gonna mount a white-tailed deer from start to finish. But I want you to notice how nice and rounded Congratulations, your deer is now ready for the wall.